Hi, here I am in Adobe Animate with my simple character who has a, a hat and, and two shoes that I would like to eventually, when I hit Command Return and create a Swift, I'd like the end user to be able to drag and drop the shoes and the hat onto the character. To do this, I need to do a couple of things. Uh, one is I should clean up my desktop here by uh, naming my layers. My top layer will be character and objects. And then my bottom layer is just this background, pink color. Pink background. Awesome. Okay, that's better. It's more organized. I'm going to lock that pink background because I don't need to use anything from it. Uh, and cool. If I want to make objects draggable, I need to convert them to symbols. So I'm going to highlight my red hat here and go to Modify, Convert to Symbol, and I'm going to make this into a movie clip called Red Hat. I'm going to use Camel Case, which is um, two words. The first word's all lowercase, and in the second word, the first letter is uppercase. There can be no spaces when you name your movie clip file. You shouldn't have any spaces or dashes or forward slash. Just get out of the habit of having spaces in there. Cool. I'll hit OK. And I'll do the same for my shoes. So modify, convert to symbol. Um, that is his right shoe, and that is his modify convert to symbol left shoe. Great. I have these three objects. I've given them symbols names, um, and I'd like to talk to them using ActionScript. First and foremost, we remember from the frame uh, timeline frame animation that we need to give each object a property name. So I have this left shoe highlighted and I'm going to give the property name left shoe so that the symbol name and the property name are the same. The most important thing is that is the property name because that's how we'll talk to this object using ActionScript but to keep yourself same it's nice to have the symbol and the property name the same. Great! Uh, I'm going to now select the right shoe and give that a name in my properties panel. And here I'm going to say red hat. All right, all three of these objects have property names as they appear on the stage. Cool. I now want to talk to them using ActionScript. So I'm going to go to Window Actions. Now in the last tutorial we used code snippets to talk to our timeline using ActionScript. We're going to hand code the actions so you can get an idea of how that works. I'm going to open up the Actions window and the first thing I'd like to do is I would like to talk to this red hat so that it can be dragged when we export this file for a user to interact with. So, using conventions, using ActionScript conventions, I'm going to type some code. You will find this code, so you can copy and paste it at the bottom of the YouTube video in the comment section. All right, the first thing I want to do is talk to that red hat using the property name that I gave it. I now want to say, hey, let's add an event listener. That event listener is going to be a mouse event and it's going to be a mouse down. Uh, once someone clicks on mouse down then I want a certain function to happen and I'm going to call that function start move. Great. Next line. 
function. What function are you talking about? Well, the start move function. I just called it start move up here, and this is what I want to have happen when that start move gets called. Start move, well, start move is going to be an event. It's going to be a mouse event. Now, ActionScript is trying to give me some uh, code hints here, which is very nice of it, but I don't need the code hint. Uh, so now I'm going to hit colon, and I'm going to type void, and I'm going to open up a curly brace. And when I open up a curly brace, it automatically puts a closing curly brace. And it gives me this red line indicating that this is the content that goes in between the curly braces. And what I want to say is, hey, Red Hat, start drag. And then I'll do a semicolon. OK, cool. Now all of this will allow the user to click on the red hat with a mouse down, and that will trigger this function called start move to happen. And start move is all about just telling that red hat start drag. A couple things. Anything that's blue is pre-scripted code that ActionScript recognizes. I don't have to program out how start drag works. ActionScript knows what start drag can do. Also, add event listener. That means basically, hey, Red Hat, uh, perk up your ears. Whenever someone does a mouse event, such as clicking down on a mouse, then do this thing. Now this thing is, I call it start move. I could call it hot dog, and it would work every bit as well. It's not semantically very useful to call it hot dog. This line of code um, is added because if all the libraries were imported into Flash every single time it ran, it would really slow down the output. So we only kind of call it in as needed, but Flash will add that code. In general, Flash will add that code for us. All right, let's test our movie. I'll move this aside, and I'll do Control Return. I get a, uh, the Swift file, and cool, look, hey, I can drag that hat around. Oh no, but I can't get rid of that hat. It's stuck to my mouse. Back to the drawing board. Better go to my action script here. What do I need? Well, I have a start move. I need a stop move. So I'm going to set it up similarly. Red hat. Add event listener mouse event mouse up stop move function stop move event mouse event Oops. Void. Open curly brace. They automatically close that curly brace. And now I want to say red hat stop drag. Let's see how that works. I'm going to drag my hat over and release. Awesome. Cool.